good day everyone welcome back to another episode of career australia we've been doing career australia um, in malayalam and english in the previous episodes now we would like to move over to uh, english because i think this is a good program and, and it will actually help many migrants uh, in terms of the career search in australia today we have got uh, mr vinesh balan uh, here with us today Hi. welcome It's a pleasure being here yep. thank you uh, he came to australia in 2018 and he been working with iris uh, and technology firm as a software developer in melbourne and he is also a, an innovative person in terms of uh, introducing new things to australia <laughs> he been uh, introduced two uh, initiatives in australia one is about a meetup where he provides an opportunity once a month for new migrants to come and meet and greet and another one is um, network walk yeah. which is actually a half an hour walk in the cbd yeah. uh, for new people to come it's all about you know uh, having bringing that belongingness and sharing and you know having that uh, introduction to each other so people feel confident yeah. okay so vinesh i just wanted to uh, it's it will be good for you to share your journey because that's what you know people would like to hear and then it actually helps them to improve themselves yeah. and or when they come here you know uh, it actually gives them a good understanding of Uh, how to start the journey mm. so um i the first thing i actually wanted to ask you is you know when did you came you know and what preparation you did before you coming to australia so i came here in jan 2018 january 20, 2018 it's been now uh, two years now time flies yeah <laughs> that's it, that's it. um but uh, the preparation started in mid 2017 you know um i actually got my pr faster than expected so we were not really prepared mm. as in you know we knew we applied for this but we are not prepared okay we got this now okay what next mm. so once i got the pr you know first thing that everyone does is going to google mm. yes figuring out what to do what to do <laughs> yeah so um major focus was on job search yeah. that's the unfortunately that's the major priority everything mm. else comes secondary mm. right so i um, in the process of google i came across a few uh, services called career coaches you know they help you but i didn't know what actually they do but mm. it's always good to have someone over here helping mm. you rather yeah. than blindly jumping into it yep. right yep. so, so I, it's always we actually did a, uh, one of our episode on mentoring yep because as you rightly said you know men- a mentor is actually a good thing for australia because sometimes you uh, you have this misperception of what's waiting here and then you understand the expectation versus reality is totally different so many people they would have gone through that experience to realize that but when you do such search beforehand you actually come with a good understanding yeah. of what the market is and you know how the culture of or the the generic environment of work which actually helps you to you know get right. some good inputs in the beginning right that that's a very valid point if you Um, the the story that i share is you know if you're sick and if you google if you just have a headache it'll probably say you're going to die tomorrow <laughs> yeah right so it's very <laughs> important to have a, a mentor the right mentor yep. so i decided to take uh, the service of this uh, uh, a particular career coach you know um, who had uh, shared excellent stories on youtube he had excellent reviews so i thought you know why not yep. it costed big money but you know it's probably worth it so me and my wife came together so we both opted for the uh, service so mm-hmm. uh, just to give a brief of what usual career coaches do they get your linkedin resume mm. interview skills understanding the market and stuff yes. like that mm. right so i started doing this before i even arrived to australia so that i was prepared yep. and uh, yeah jan 2018 i came here and that's how it all started that was my preparation okay that's good i think many people have uh, this concern of you know when they look for such service they may look at uh, the cost before and you know they may think uh, that may not be something they wanted to do because of just because of the cost factor but i think what you did is really appreciative you know you rather than just only advising people you did it by yourself so you yeah. actually get that first hand experience yeah. of how that goes and then you know see what 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 was that offering so yeah. i think that was a brave step and sometimes you know it depends on what sector people are looking for i think that is something that some people can follow there is a catch in that though yeah. be very careful on who you go for service yes um shop around there are a lot of services by the government mm. which is op- almost free yep. try to utilize that rather than going with 
coaches which yeah. are usually expensive mm. so definitely shop around and make sure that you are going for the right person yep yeah. it's really important yeah i think those some of those services that i think we also mentioned about one of our episodes on volunteering and how some of the services can be used yeah. which uh, with the intention of you know sharing that information that it's not that uh, there is no service available rather there are services but unfortunately you know when there is nothing called there are some welcome packs but it doesn't provide all of that information no. so sometimes you may have to do that shop around just to understand what services are see in. australia is a country where you know if you want something you have to go get it yeah no one will give it to yeah. you on a plate yeah absolutely. nothing you will not get anything on yeah. a plate so <laughs> be ready for that if yeah. you're planning to migrate here. yeah and then t- take up that challenge as well yeah. you know that you you coming to a country where you it's a land of opportunities Definitely. and then when you want to really to jump into those opportunities you know see what are the different avenues to that uh, homework beforehand yeah. so that you do it in the best smooth way you can mm. so you did talk about uh, you know uh, the experience with the career coach so i just wanted to talk something more about how was your initial job such experience so we landed here uh, because we had a mentor over here you know we touch based with him and we got a feel of how things work mm-hmm. and then i started my job search so we had a set of strategy you know there are a couple of strategies over there so this particular career coach had the strategy of numbers mm-hmm. go aggressive call meet connect apply go for numbers you know yep. and things will work out that was this uh, particular career coach strategy fortunately within 2 weeks my wife got an offer oh wow. great that's good right yeah. so we had some financial stability and that that kind of eases you down right yes, that's right and uh, so that was good but uh, so you know my job search continued and i was like hey she got it in 2 weeks it shouldn't be too hard for me yeah, maybe a month right. or maybe more that's yeah, fine yeah right? everyone asks that time zone yeah this doesn't mean that it will take time forever exactly yeah. that's all right so i kind of relaxed uh, you know i got myself a playstation mm-hmm. tv that's this good. this was this was my routine you know yeah. watch tv play games supply wait for calls and that was my journey so that's how it started yeah. uh, but it slowly got worse mm. uh, one month two month three month it took me 8 months to find work mm. and i did not enjoy that at all mm. right uh, although you think you will enjoy sitting at home eventually you will start self doubting mm. you'll start questioning whether you are on the right track or especially for us who are experienced professionals yep. they will question themselves as and why are they are we not getting a job are we not worth it right so all those questions kick in but in a nutshell it took 8 months and it was long and frustrating i think many uh, i can really relate to me, your story because i think many people have got this uh, time frame of 6 months to 12 months uh, which is very common in australia yeah. but i think this experience uh, you know what it intend uh, what it helps people is to bring down that long term to a, a bit more short term in terms of for careers uh, for reaching into their own careers it's that plus how you handle those that time period mm. for me uh, i am not a social person i don't go and talk to strangers i don't do for co- coffee catch up so all i did is sit at home watch tv apply i'm not even to into sports as well so yeah. nothing was there for me and that was frustrating and it was affecting my confidence as well mm. right so there is a lot you can do in that period to bring up your confidence and increase your chances of getting a job as yep. well mm. and sitting behind a computer computer is not one of them yeah <laughs> you, you can do that but not for all day yeah you have to exactly. do this uh, multiple uh, strategies yes. like the coach said you no know, but how you do that in a timely manner yeah yeah so is there anything you wanted to share with us about a few worst experience you went through uh, when you did this uh, job S- career search see um for me the worst experiences for a job seeker is rejection or 
not even getting a rejection, as in ghosting or silence. That's what we call here. It's very common. It's mm. part of job search. Uh, so I have mm, tons of stories where you know you expect, hey, you almost got this job. The offer will come today, yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. One week, two week, three week, and then nothing, nothing, nothing at all, right? If if that person just calls me and says, "Hey, you are not selected," fine, I have a closure. Maybe I'll cry for two days and done. Yeah. But this is like, okay, am I going to get it? Am I not going to get it? Is something happening, or should I do something? That that's the worst thing that happens uh, during my job search. So I I specifically remove remember my first experience over here. Mm. So uh, I went to talk to a recruiter. This this was my first ever uh, recruiter interview, mm -hmm. and that was the first time I ever suited up like this. Okay. <laughs> I have never worn a suit in my life, so I was all suited up. It's the yes. first interview, right? Yes. You have to be it ready. Was, yes. So when I went to this interview, it was at one of the big agencies, and uh, I I had a really good chat with the recruiter. So the recruiter was also a migrant, so he could relate to what I was going through. Yep. Uh, we had a really good chat. 30 minutes after 30 minutes you know he, he sent me a couple of jds and said you know share your resume and let's see how it goes yeah. and i was that was my first chat and it really kicked off well right but that's what that that was it after that i sent him messages emails linkedin messages calls to the office calls to his cell absolutely no response um, that was my first reality check and this happens almost every day it's part of it, but that was a shock for me to start with. And that's something that I tell every migrant to be prepared for. Mm -hmm. That will happen. Yeah. Just be prepared for it. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think sometimes we do know that, yes, rejection happens. But how do you accept that rejection is a big thing. Yeah. You know, because you actually have to maintain that confidence yeah. and uh, end of the day yes we can all build the support mechanisms around but it's also mean that you actually have to have that confidence in yourself you know that you have to keep building up you know mm -hmm. you can't just leave it and managing that rejection part is actually a, an important part of that self -confidence. it's a big part and unfortunately no one teaches you to do that it's a big big part yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I'm glad that you really came out of this yeah and I just wanted to know, ask you, so how did you end up in this job? So in the end, uh, I just applied online mm. on LinkedIn. I applied online, yeah. got through an interview, got it. So it worked out well in the end, but there's a catch in this. I mean, I always uh, share a story like applying online is like taking a lottery. Mm. Have you won a lottery ever? No, no, <laughs> neither have I. Yeah. So you either win or you lose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. It will work someday, sometime, but when or how, and it's, it's very ineffective. It's yep. very ineffective. Yep. So that's the lesson learned over there. Mm. So just because I got a job by applying online, don't think that that's how you, it is done. It's not how it is done. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's absolutely right. You, you, you know, with many of like, I'm sure you're going to talk about what you do now. And you know, one of those is like just using this different avenues. Yeah. You know, if you use different avenues that actually opens up opportunities which you never thought of before yeah. but when as you rightly said when you do just one that focus may not work because people are smart you know these days yeah. and you've got multiple avenues of things you can do yeah. and then if you're not exploring all of that you're actually not visible in the market right you know right you you are there but you have to make sure that you you are visible it's yeah it's like if you're sitting somewhere just applying jobs it's more of like you are there but invisible, yeah. you know? but we think we are visible. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, we see only ourselves, we don't yeah. see anyone else. Yeah. So that's one big thing about migrants as well, you know. You might be a big manager, project manager, senior leader or whatever you are back in your country, mm. but here you have no reference or no one knows what you're doing. Mm. So you have to be very clear about what you are and you have to put that message across. So if you're just applying, there is limited information in a resume and a resume is like, I hear the recruiter takes like less than 10 seconds before you reject a resume. Yeah, yeah. So within 10 seconds, can you okay. impress a person? Yeah. Uh, it's hard, it's hard, yeah. right? So it's very important uh, to stand out and make your whole job search experience uh, uh, an important one rather than just applying. applying. I think it also gives us some sort of maturity as well. <laughs> yes, definitely. It gives an idea of who you are yeah. and what you want. And yeah. like, 
sometimes when you reflect back on what you've done back in India or yeah. back in your country, it's yeah. like, oh, I did all this. Yeah. I'm great. I'm yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. it's because uh, in Australia is a country where you see a lot of you know best practice that sort of uh, you know environment in terms of the work culture and uh, you know in in generally the business environment. Yeah. So you actually see you raise the bar yourself, and when you do that, many people around you and the networks around you actually, you know, they also feel to raise their bar Definitely. and also they also see your growth. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's really a good, uh, you know, story. I think uh, definitely our viewers are going to learn a lot from those, uh, you know, different things you shared. I also wanted to ask you now. So what do you do now? Like, you know, you you have all this experience. So what do you do now? You know, can you talk about some of those initiatives you have started and uh, why why are you doing it? Yeah. So one thing that I uh, observed is every migrant goes through the same struggle. Mm. but no one shares that story no one tells others you know hey do this do this do this no that that doesn't happen so when i got my offer i realized that i was doing a lot of things wrong mm. and you know i just started sharing those tips i mean linkedin was a platform that i had i did not have anything else i did not have a voice i was still still you know figuring out how yeah. things work mm. so i started putting out tips on linkedin hey do this try this try this try this and i had this feeling that i have so much information on me but i don't have a platform to give it up mm. so that's how it started so i started connecting to a lot a lot of people uh, but then i wanted to take the next step and come out out of my shell of that social awkwardness you know mm. Mm. do a face to face thing yep. so last november that's november 2018 yep. i put up a post on linkedin saying hey would any of you like to have a catch up you know we'll go in a food court have some tea or coffee and have have a chat you know how things are going 39 people said yes to that and awesome. it was like okay this is real yeah. <laughs> this is real right so within a that's week a group. that's a big group i can't go in a food court anymore yeah, yeah. right <laughs> so within a week uh, i booked a room in a library yeah. and we gathered yeah. and we just shared stories hey this is what i do this is what i do this is what worked for me this is what did not work for me mm. and that's how i started uh, doing my meetups next week is my 11th meetup i do it every month mm. we get over 50 participants every time wow. uh, fortunately some recruiters and coaches volunteer to come in and just to share their tips yep. disclaimer there is no job on offer here they are just here to talk and help hey try doing this try doing mm-hmm. this this might help yep. you might be doing this wrong yep. and things like that so that's one initiative that i do mm. i do it every month mm-hmm. uh, another thing is um, we uh, probably us migrants are very awkward when it comes to networking back in our country we don't have to do it That's right, right. Yeah. we don't have well, to there is no need your skills and expertise uh, you you may do networking as part of maybe you know in terms of your career growth but not for your next career opportunity right you know so you don't have to do it and there is a there is not a need for it yes but here everything revolves around networking and we are usually awkward to that mm. approach mm. so what i'm doing is i do a network walk every week mm-hmm. in the cbd 30 minutes it's a short thing gather in a place go for a walk that's it absolute bunch of strangers so the idea here is you get comfortable with the concept of networking if you are not comfortable just come and see how people talk what they talk about and things like that mm. and eventually you will get into it right so we are that whole bunch is not experts or not great people we yeah. are all struggling yeah. uh, job seekers so yeah. just open up and get into that mix and yeah. and you never know someone might give you a lead where you get a job to that's yeah. been happening as well so yeah. you never know but yeah. that's the things that i do so my message is how you can network and what networking can do to your job search yeah. i think that's both those yeah, initiatives are great you know uh, because many times yes people do share stories but they don't take a next step forward of you know how you build it sustainably but yeah. i think what you are doing is actually building up that phase yeah. and if it's been there for more than a, almost, almost a year i think that actually is helping people yes. uh, which is you know i think it's a it's a great thing 
and then i am i am sure that it will help more people in the future thank you and you are initially saying about you know when we started uh, this particular uh, topic about what are you doing now and you saying you know there's no platform for sharing and i think that's where career australia is also pitching in exactly because uh, these days where the content you know the visual content is more appealing for people because of the different number of uh, social media or platforms i think what career australia is you know intend to or the purpose of the program is actually to get the stories out to any migrants and it could be and it's not just focused on newly arriving migrants but also the migrants who are here because they may have you know uh, opportunities Sponsor. they want to move yeah. into leadership roles which is the another area of interest for many migrants mm-hmm. because they wanted to build the career over here in yes getting into your career is one great step yeah. but over a period of time you know you wanted to have you do have that aspirations and you want to move forward and upwards so i think that's those are the things we really wanted to bring into our program so that people actually feel the value of it mm-hmm. i think uh, it was great chatting you with you today as a pleasure uh, and uh, you know i think those initiatives are great uh, i am sure uh, this platform also helps us for more people to come to that program and i hope that the numbers uh, you know go more than 100 and you want have place to you know how come they tell you on monday well, that's not a good thing you know <laughs> I, i want everyone to share their stories yes. so if someone attends my meetup i encourage them to if they get a job share yeah. it you know yeah. so that i don't have to be the sole person doing it everyone can do this right yep. so i encourage everyone to share the story and career australia is yep. absolutely brilliant platform to do that mm. so that it reaches more voices yep. yeah thank you so much vinesh for your time today i think uh, we will hear more stories from you in the upcoming episodes and thank you for watching career australia today have a good day <laughs>